in the fourth lesson of Bike Service School how not to replace the inner tube, how not to install the tire for your customer, what has somebody messed up with these braking pads, a little experiment with another braking pads installation mistake, should this cable be fastened on this side of this bolt or this side of this bolt, and then the weirdest shifting system on the mountain bike and how to replace the cables on them. And three questions at the end, let's do this! There's going to be seven mistakes explained in this lesson and we're starting with replacing the inner tube on the flat tire and truing not the wheel but the tire. This is what you start with. I removed the major dirt from the tire so that it doesn't get into the tire between the rim and the inner tube and the tire because then it would be easier to get another flat have a clean environment, show your customers a high quality of your work. We are starting with the tire levers. How to use them? Gotcha! Now that we have our tire levers, we are pushing the bead of the tire to the center of the rim where it has a smaller diameter, that means less tension on the tire. Then you just scoop up the bead. Uh, two levers, I would say it's just enough, three is more than enough. Uh, don't worry, those levers will be flying around your workshop, no problem. You can see how quickly three levers work together. Pay attention now, students, there comes the first mistake. Will you get it? There you have the mistake number one. Never, never throw away the inner tube before you find the hole in it and perhaps also the damage in the tire. When you gently get the inner tube out of the wheel, keep it just as it was there in the wheel because then when you find the hole like here, you will know that unless there was a snake bite when the rim is cutting through the inner tube, the damage will also occur on the tire. This is the quickest and easiest way to find thorns and other particles in the tire. That was the spot. You are saving time, you don't want to charge too much for replacing the inner tube. Guys, how much do you pay or do you charge customers for replacing the inner tube on the workshops all over the world? Let us know. I've seen it so many times where they charge you maybe two, three dollars for replacing the inner tube plus five dollars for the new inner tube and you get slow leak flat tires all over again. Why is it so? Because they haven't found and removed the thorn from the tire. Here comes the mistake number two, putting the bead of the tire over the inner tube or not inserting the inner tube all the way in. It will lead to two problems. You can blow the inner tube and the wheel will be wobbly. Watch me closely and see what happens. This is the line, my students, that shows how badly or how nicely your tire sits in the rim. You can see that it goes up and down, then back up again and down. Sometimes it may even disappear behind the rim. Some newbies will even try to fix the rim, to true the rim, but it's not the rim. You can see how the tire is working now. You will feel it when you ride the bike. It looks awful. It feels awful, we need to fix it. First, the most common place where bike mechanics can do these mistakes is just around this valve. You need to push the valve in so that there is no inner tube under the bead of the tire and then you check the whole tire. Water or soapy water, this is the solution for all the tires that might be a little bit hard to true on the rim. 
from my practice, from my perspective, I can tell you that I just don't want to waste any more time like here. I just applied water for one side and the other side was untrue. I always have water at hand when I'm installing any tire. I put the water on both sides, no matter what kind of the rim and the tire it is, and my tires sit really nicely. But then as a bike mechanic, you also need to be aware that some especially cheaper tires will never get 100% straight. For example, I have had some problems with the cheaper models of the Schwalbe tires, but then my Racing Ralph and Racing Ray are 100% true, so just know that. The mistake number three. I got this bike from the Craigslist and it had its braking pads installed in the way that, hmm, don't seem to be bad, but they are bad, they are wrong. People who have these spacers installed in the wrong way will never discover how strong V-brakes, even the cheap ones, can be. These arms are too close to each other. Why is it so? Well, it's because of these two little spacers and I'm also guilty of this sin of the Cannondale Super V project. Let's remove this arm, I'm gonna show you what it's all about. This thicker spacer should be here and this thinner spacer should be there. In other words, these two have been swapped. These spacers allow for the braking pad adjustment and it's very important that the thicker one is on the brake pad side and the thinner one is on the outer side. Let's fix it on the left and the right side and you will see what happens to the brake. It will be a completely different brake. See the difference? Let's have the other one fixed as well and then we put the wheel back on and you will see what happens to the cable. Now we need more slack on the cable, so we readjust the cable. You can already see these arms are much further away from each other and the braking and the modulation is much, much better. What's interesting, on the rear wheel the right side was correct and the left side was wrong. And here is how the new braking pads will always look like. It's time for a dangerous experiment and the mistake number four. I haven't seen bike mechanics do it, but I've seen bike owners do it. And it's swapping the right braking pad with the left braking pad. You can install them on either side. The brakes will kind of break, but it's wrong. You can see a forward arrow right here and also R letter, which stands for the right side. When you do it like that and for some reason you forget to put in the retaining pin or the bolt, here's what happens when you ride the bike and try to brake. Fixing this life-threatening mistake is very easy. You simply want to have the R braking pad on the right drive side and the L braking pad on the left non-drive side and the arrow should indicate the direction of the wheel spinning forward. Let's see the road bike. It's all quite similar but I want to gradually show you more and more models and components so that you get used to them. This is the braking pad of the old Tigra brakes from 2014 you can see the spacer on the braking pad side and the little spacer with the bolt on the outer side this is also the wear limit you don't want to go over the line there and here is the retaining bolt or screw when you undo this one you'll be able to push those braking pads to the back but sometimes it's difficult so i'm going to show you a little hack for that you want to use the brake for that and by moving the wheel backwards a couple of times you should be able to remove the braking pads and install the new ones. Moving on to the cable replacement mistakes, we start with the road bike. The shifter of the road bike has two functions, braking and shifting, which means that there will be two cables in each shifter moving in different directions. First, you wanna remove the hood or at least open it up like this. 
And so our fifth mistake is not shifting all the way down. We want to have zero tension on the cable, but also only in that position your shifter will give up the cable. Otherwise, you will never find it right here. This is a newbie mistake, but the sixth one will be quite popular from among the bike mechanics. By the way, I'm showing you the whole process. I have removed the cable. Now I'm putting it back. Do it slowly. And then there will be two ways of routing the cable through the shifter. Some cables will be routed on the outer side of the handlebar, some on the inner side. The inner side is more common and we have it on the inner side too. The first way to get there is to have your cable in the big loop like I have it right now and to push it into the outer casing. The second one is to try to do it right away without doing a loop. Let's see my favorite loop method. Mistake number six. Should this cable be on this side of the bolt or the other side? Or it doesn't matter. It does matter. It changes the levering ratio. So you should be looking for these grooves, especially on the derailleur side. There is a factory groove for the cable. If you mount it on the other side of the bolt, some gears will be working and some will not. Same on your front derailleur. If you do it correctly through the groove, it will work perfectly. If you don't, it will still work, but not perfectly. You've seen my video with this mistake on the Shimano 105-5700 derailleur. Now the best test is the trimming. I'm trimming down, shifting down, Trimming up, shifting up, trimming down, shifting down. If the trimming works, you have done your work properly. Okay, I promise you the weirdest MTB shifting system and it's the Shimano Dual Control. Somehow people did not want it and so we, don't, we no longer can buy it, but it really shifts well. The weird thing about the low normal derailleur is that when you release the cable, it will shift actually to the lowest gear, not to the highest gear. And now the last seventh mistake, not cleaning the old cable before removing it. This is a mistake, even though you throw it away, you want to clean the cable because otherwise you will pull all the dirt through the housings of your customer's bike. Now I'm gonna get the new cable. By the way, in two months we'll be filming right here, my biggest studio ever. Now take a look at how I'm installing the right cable for the rear derail because with the front one on the left shifter it will be a whole different story. Please know that this drill has the groove on the other side of the bolt comparing to the old Tigra I showed you. You need to pay attention to that. Alright, this was the right one for the rear derailleur, the left one is different and we are in another room in this property because that one is under construction. The third lesson was being recorded right here. So now, if I'm not filming, I'm working on our new studio.
back to our cables. This was a very obvious entry for the cable on the right one. And this one doesn't have any. And before you start undoing all the screws, I'm gonna tell you just one thing. We need to undo just this one right here. And then the big cap will open up. Of course, same story here. It has to be shifted down so that the cable is not under tension. Then we undo the fixing bolt for the cable. The cable is free now, you see. It's loose. And ready to be replaced. And as for the front derailleurs, you see there are different systems of cable routing. One derailleur can get the cable from above or from below. Make sure that you route the cable just as it was when your customer brought the bike to you, but check whether the cable was secured properly. That's it for the lesson number four. It's time for three questions I've got for you today. Number one, true or false? What seems to be a wobbly wheel doesn't necessarily mean that you need to true the rim itself, but perhaps the tire. True, T. False, F. Number two. Why do I recommend to clean the old cable before we replace it with a new one on the outer cable routing? And number three. Name at least three of the seven mistakes we have mentioned and described and explained in this lesson. Thank you very much for being with me. See you in lesson five.